Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I am Valsa Williams and with me is Abhishek Mukhopadhyay with the Midday News. The headlines. Budget session of parliament resumes today after break. Rajya Sabha chairman M Venkaiya Naidu urges members to sustain positive spirit of first part of session in this part as well. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman moves motion in Lok Sabha to allow same day presentation and discussion of budget and supplementary grants of Jammu and Kashmir. Center assures education of students evacuated from war torn Ukraine will be taken care of by government. Government reiterates to explore all possible options to meet the country's energy demand in view of the Ukraine crisis and COVID-19 pandemic. In Manipur, newly elected members of 12th Legislative Assembly take oaths. Budget session of Assam Legislative Assembly begins. Met Department issues heat wave alert in some parts of Kerala, Konkan region, Gujarat and Mumbai. More than 180 crore 19 lakh covid vaccine doses administered in the country recovery rate improves to 98.72%. Sports minister Anurag Thakur congratulates shuttler Lakshya Sen on winning silver at German Open 2022. And in cricket third day's play of second test between India and Sri Lanka underway in Bengaluru. As we start the bulletin we appeal to our listeners to stay safe from covid-19 by following these four simple steps get fully vaccinated wear a face mask maintain 2 gaz ki doori for social distancing focus on hand and face hygiene and now the news in detail the second part of the budget session of parliament has resumed today Both houses have returned to their normal sittings in view of decline in COVID-19 cases. On the first day of the second part of the budget session, Rajya Sabha Chairman M Venkaiya Naidu urged members to sustain the positive spirit of the first part of the session in this part as well. He highlighted that the first part of the session had witnessed no forced adjournment and the productivity of the upper house was over 100%. In his remarks Mr Naidu also talked about inadequate attendance of members in the meetings of the parliamentary standing committee and said attending the meeting should be given priority by the members. Earlier the house made obituary references to the passing away of four former members including industrialist Rahul Bajaj. The government today reiterated that it will explore all possible options to meet the country's energy demand in view of the Ukraine crisis and the COVID-19 pandemic. Replying to supplementaries in the Rajya Sabha, Petroleum Minister Hardeep Singh Puri said the government has contacted the Russian Federation and discussion is underway over several issues. On petroleum prices the minister said prices of petrol and diesel have been determined by several international and national factors. He said the center has taken steps to bring down the prices of petrol and diesel by reducing excise duty last November to provide relief to the consumers. As the government of India and the oil companies are concerned, we are not floating any oil bonds and passing the generation up. We will take all the other steps. We are not indulging in any of those other things which are culture of impunity, which I mentioned, okay. 2G, CWC, etc. Okay. We will take all legitimate steps to try and maintain the price of oil at the bunk at a reasonable level. Mr Puri said nine states have not brought down duties levied on petrol and diesel giving the comparative data of various countries the minister said prices of petrol and diesel have increased marginally in India in comparison to prices raised in the various countries including USA Canada Germany UK France in recent times The government today said that defense expenditure has witnessed continuous increase over the last 5 years In a written reply in the Rajya Sabha Minister of State for Defence Ajay Bhatt said budget estimate of over 5 lakh 25000 crore rupees has been earmarked for the defence expenditure in the financial year 2022-23 which was over 3 lakh 79000 crore in the financial year 2017-18 replying to another query the minister said expenditure of over 3 lakh 86000 crore rupees was incurred on indigenous procurement of defense equipment by the defense forces for modernization in the last 8 years union finance minister nirmala sitaraman moved the motion in the lok sabha today to allow same day presentation and discussion of budget and supplementary grants of union territory of jammu and kashmir 
The minister asked the chair to suspend Rule 205 of the Rules of Procedure and Conduct of Business to enable same-day presentation and discussion of the budget for 2020-23 and supplementary demands for grants for 2021-22. The member of the opposition, Manish Tiwari, objected to the motion, saying that the members need time to scrutinize the budget and the discussion should be taken up tomorrow. He also sought the ruling of the chair on powers vested in the House to suspend the rule. Another opposition member, N.K. Prem Chandran, too, registered his opposition to allow suspension of Rule 205. However, the Speaker allowed the motion to be laid in the House. The Finance Minister tabled the budget and supplementary demands for grants of Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir in the Lok Sabha before moving the motion to have the discussion on the same day. Education Minister Dharminder Pradhan today assured that the education of students evacuated from the war on Ukraine will be taken care of by the government. Replying to the question raised in the Lok Sabha by Gaurav Gogoi from the Congress, the minister said evacuating Indian students from Ukraine is testimony of the collective wisdom of 130 crore Indians and the future will be taken care of. The DMK member T.R. Balu thanked Prime Minister for initiating Operation Ganga that helped rescue Tamil Nadu students. He saw the central government help in continuing the education of such students who have returned from Ukraine. Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Singh Thakur has said that Prime Minister Narendra Modi's leadership, development and welfare of the poor has brought victory to the BJP in the recent Assembly polls. Talking to reporters outside Parliament, Mr. Thakur said Mr. Modi's image, the way welfare schemes were implemented on the ground for the poor and the work done to give new speed to development and honest leadership brought the desired results. He said anti-incumbency was not visible anywhere in the four states. Mr. Thakur said Bharatiya Janata Party registered a big victory, also due to the clean image of the chief ministers, good work done by the government and hard work of BJP Karikartas. Narendra Modi ji ka netrata, vikas garib kalyan. Kahi na kahi dharatal par uska bhoat bada farak pure chunab mein charo rajya mein dekhne ko mila. Aur Modi ji ki chavi ka Bharati Anta Party ko satta mein aane mein bhoat bada ek laap mila hai. Garibon ke liye jis tarah se yojanaye dharatal par lagu ki gai garibon ko laap mila. Aur vikas ko nai unchaiyo par vikas ko nai raftar dene ka kaam kiya. और ईमानदार नेतृत्व जहां एंटी इनकम्बेंसी हमारी किसी राज्य में दिखती नहीं थी मुख्यमंत्री की साफ छवि अच्छा काम कहीं ना कहीं वो भी काम आया है और कुल मिलाकर जो संगठन के सभी कार्यकर्ताओं ने राष्ट्रीय अध्यक्ष के नेतृत्व में काम किया चारों राज्यों में बड़ी जीत भारतीय जनता पार्टी ने दर्ज की है In Manipur, the newly elected members of the 12th Legislative Assembly took oath this morning. Pro Tem Speaker S. Rajan administered oath to 60 members at the Assembly Hall. Meanwhile, the BJP, which got absolute majority in the recently concluded general election, is expected to form a BJP-led government. The leaders of the party have begun discussions for formation of the government and selection of the chief ministerial candidate. More in this report. The elected members who have taken oath as MLA today consists of 32 of BJP, 7 of National People's Party, 6 of Janata Dal United, 5 each of Indian National Congress and Naga People's Front, 2 of Kuki People's Alliance and 3 independent candidates. Historically, 5 elected women candidates also gave their oath as member of Manipur Legislative Assembly today. With the conclusion of the oath-taking ceremony, the 12th Manipur Legislative Assembly has come into force from today. In Telangana, G. Sukhendar Reddy has been unanimously elected as the chairman of the Legislative Council for the second term today. Legislative Secretary announced that only nomination of Sukhendar Reddy was received and thus he has been elected as chairman. He became chairman of the council in 2019 and continued till June last year. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath called on President Ramnath Kovind the Rashtrapati Bhavan this morning. He also met Union Minister on Road, Transport and Highways, Minister Nitin Gadkari. The budget session of the Assam Assembly has begun today at Dispur in Guwahati. Addressing the members of the House, Professor Jagdish Mukhi asserted that the Assam government is motivated by the mission of Prime Minister Narendra Modi to turn Northeast into a new engine of growth. He urged the House to support and work together for all-round development of the state. The Governor said that the Assam Integrated River Basin Management Program, funded by World Bank, will be implemented in selected tributaries of the Brahmaputra. Professor Mukhi said the recruitment process of over 27,000 Class 3 and Grade 4 posts will start soon by the Recruitment Board. 
He also said that Assam government has sanctioned 1,000 model Anganwadi centers in the state and 25 lakh rupees per center. Meanwhile, newly elected BGP legislator from Majuli, Bhubangam, took oath today. The centre, after due deliberations with scientific bodies, has decided to start COVID-19 vaccination for 12 to 13 years and 13 to 14 years age groups from the 16th of this month. It will be for those born in 2008, 2009 and 2010, those who are already above 12 years of age. The COVID-19 vaccine to be administered would be Corbivax, manufactured by Biological Evans, Hyderabad. It is to be noted that population above 14 years of age is already being administered COVID-19 vaccine under the ongoing COVID-19 vaccination program. The government has also decided that the condition of comorbidity for COVID-19 precaution dose for a population over 60 years of age will be removed forthwith. Hence, from the 16th of March 2020 to onwards, the entire population above 60 years of age will be eligible for precaution dose of COVID-19 vaccine. More than 180 crore 19 lakh COVID vaccine doses have been administered in the country so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. More than 4 lakh 61 thousand doses were administered in the last 24 hours during the same period. A total of 2,503 new cases were reported, which is the lowest in 680 days. India's active caseload currently stands at 36,168, the lowest in 675 days, and it is at 0.08%. The recovery rate is currently at 98.72%. In Himachal Pradesh, the construction process of the Una Hamirpur railway line project is in the final stage. It is to be built at a cost of about 4,000 crore rupees. Out of this, 75% will be borne by the central government and 25% by the state government. Our correspondent reports that efforts have been made to execute the project on a war footing to ensure its timely completion. Union Information and Broadcasting Minister Anurag Singh Thakur said that fast steps are now being taken to finalize this ambitious project. He said all technical difficulties in the construction of this railway line project have been fixed. The Union Minister further said 75% of the expenditure on this important project to be built at an estimated cost of Rs 4,000 crore will be borne by Central government and rest of the 25% by the state. The Union Minister said that he and Chief Minister Jairam Thakur had earlier held detailed discussion with the Railway Minister in this regard. Meanwhile, the people of the स्टेट एक्सप्रेस जो ग्रेटिट्यूड टू द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट मैं विनोद ठाकुर जिला हमीरपुर का निवासी ये हम सब लोगों के लिए बड़ा ही लाभदायक होने वाला है खास करके उन्ना हमीरपुर और बिलासपुर के लोगों के लिए सभी व्यवसायियों के लिए फायदा होने वाला है कि आने वाले समय में ट्रांसपोर्टेशन के माध्यम से और हमारी यात्रा भी सुगम होने वाली है इसके लिए हम सभी मोदी सरकार का धन्यवाद करते हैं और खास करके हमारे सांसद और कैबिनेट मंत्री श्री अनुराग ठाकुर जी का भी धन्यवाद करते हैं अनडाउटेडली द एम्बिशियस उन्ना हमीरपुर रेलवे लाइन विल गिव न्यू इम्पुटेस टू द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ हिमाचल Sanjeev Sundariyal, Air News, Shimla. You were listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Government decides to start COVID-19 vaccination for 12 to 13 years and 13 to 14 years age group from the 16th of this month. Budget session of Parliament resumes today after break. Radha Sabha Chairman M. Venkai Naidu urges members to sustain positive spirit of first part of the session in this part as well. Finance Mr. Nirmala Sitaraman moves motion in the Lok Sabha to allow same-day presentation and discussion of budget and supplementary grants of Jammu and Kashmir. Centre assures education of students evacuated from war-torn Ukraine will be taken care of by the government. Government reiterates to explore all possible options to meet country's energy demand in view of Ukraine crisis and COVID-19 pandemic. In Manipur, newly elected members of the 12th Legislative Assembly takes oath. Budget session of the Assam Legislative Assembly begins. Med Department issues heat wave alert in some parts of Kerala, Konkan region, Gujarat and Mumbai. More than 180 crore 19 lakh COVID vaccine doses administered in the country. Recovery rate improves to 98.72%. Sports Minister Anurag Thakur congratulates Shatla Lakshay Sen on winning silver at the German Open 2022. And in cricket, third day play of the second test between India and Sri Lanka underway in Bangalore. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at the rate AIR News Alerts. Dunia 
या रंग बिरंगी की ऐसी खबरें जिन्होंने आपको गुदगुदाया हंसाया और हैरान किया कार्यक्रम के पचहत्तरवे अंक पर विशेष कड़ी लेकर आ रहे हैं आपके लिए सुनिएगा जरूर 15 मार्च मंगलवार को सुबह साढ़े सात बजे कार्यक्रम आज सवेरे में और रात सवा नौ बजे कार्यक्रम स्पॉटलाइट में दुनिया रंग बिरंगी पचहत्तरवी कड़ी Welcome back to the midday news. The Kerala Disaster Management Authority has issued an alert for heat wave as the state continues to reel under extreme hot weather. The weather department has forecast higher day temperatures in six districts today: Kollam, Alappuzha, Kottayam, Thrissur, Kozhikod, and Kannur districts may record a maximum of 40 degrees Celsius. The IMD has issued a yellow alert with a heat wave warning against Uh, at least for the next two days in konkan region and mumbai and its adjoining areas imd has issued guidelines for the people to follow in the heat wave conditions which include avoiding direct exposure to sunlight especially between 12 noon and 3 pm drinking enough fluids among others high temperature prevailed for the second day yesterday with mercury rising to nearly 39 degrees which is nearly 6 degrees above normal we spoke to senior scientist rk jainavani the imd has issued the orange color warning for gujarat and konkan and goa for two days today 14 15th and 16th it will start little decreasing the temperature and the besides gujarat and konkan and goa also for west rajasthan we have issued yellow color warning for three days heat wave and remaining part of india the temperature is just normal particularly for punjab area and delhi delhi also 32 to 33 it will reach to 36 temperature within next seven days Prime Minister Narendra Modi has greeted people on the start of the Sikh New Year. In a tweet, Mr. Modi hoped that Wahe Guru will bless everyone with good health and prosperity. He hoped that the teachings of the Guru Sahib's will keep illuminating the world with their brightness. And now let's listen to a special program, Azadi Ka Safar, highlighting the importance of the day during the freedom struggle. Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsa. Azadi ka safar with AIR News Birth of a Nation India's glorious freedom struggle is one of the greatest struggles the modern world has ever witnessed AIR News brings you a glimpse of the struggle every day Azadi ki In today's episode we remember freedom fighter Jay Narayan Vyas who died on the 14th of March 1963 he was a prominent leader in Jodhpur during the freedom struggle Jay Narayan was born in the princely state of Jodhpur in 1899 he started the Marwar Hitkarni Sabha to fight against both English and non Jodhpuri administrators which also received the support of the Maharaja of Jodhpur however Later he also got involved in freedom movements led by the Congress party which were not sympathetic to the maharaja and resulted in his exile from the state He returned to his hometown and in 1941 became chairman of the Jodhpur municipality Jay Narayan was imprisoned 5 times including for a period of 2 years from 1942 to 1944 for his involvement in the Jodhpur Praja Mandal the Youth League and the Marwar Lok Parishad Sona ro suraj uge chaandi jehdi raat mara rajasthan ki he Vyas was elected to the Constituent Assembly from Jodhpur and put forth his views on the issues of state autonomy and the drawing up of state boundaries. After independence, Vyas became the Prime Minister of the princely state of Jodhpur in March 1948. He also headed the Rajputana Pradesh Congress Committee until 1949. Later, he became the Chief Minister of the Independent State of Rajasthan. a position that he held twice between 1951 and 1954 we salute the great nationalist kerala me 
நின்றேயோ மனப்பேர் கேள்கே கோள்மயிர் கொள்ளும் என்னுள்ளமென்னும் நீராளப்பச்ச விரிச்சவயலுகள் நீலே கிடக் We also remember famous Malayalam writer Shankaran Kutti Pottekat who was born on the 14th of March 1913 in Korikod. He was involved with activities of the Indian National Congress and attended the Tripuri session of 1939 for which he resigned from his teaching job as the school authorities did not allow him leave of absence. He was involved in the freedom struggle and worked alongside freedom fighters like Mathai Manjuran. In 1962, Pottekatta won the parliamentary election from Thillicherry, Kerala. Poottiri kattichu pādhiravum pinne poottiru vādhira pūnilavum Pottekatta was a writer of strong social commitment and ideals, possessing an individualistic vision. Pottekatta made his mark in literature with a few short stories in the 1930s. His first story Rajaneethi was published in 1928 Magane Konn Madhyam and Hindu Muslim Maitri were some of his notable early works Pottekatta won the Kerala Sahitya Academy award in 1961 for the novel Oru Teruvinte Katha the story of a street and the Gyan Peet award in 1980 for the novel Oru Desatinte Katha the story of a locale His works have been translated into English, Italian, Russian, German and Czech besides all major Indian languages. He died on the 6th of August 1982. We salute the great Indian. We also remember Indian National Army's Lance Naik SK Mishra a resident of Haryana Mishra fought on the Burma front against the British led allied forces and was killed in a gun battle on the 14th of March 1944 We salute the great martyr <laughs> We also remember Martha Mehma Singh, a resident of District Firozpur, Punjab. Mehma joined a peaceful jatha to Jayato Gurudwara Gangsar Nabha in 1925 against the British order prohibiting all prayer assemblies in it. The police stopped the jatha from entering the Gurudwara and arrested Mehma Singh along with many other participants. Mehma Singh died on the 14th of March 1925 due to brutal police torture in Nabha Beer Jail. We salute the great martyr. That brings us to the end of this episode of Azadi Ka Safar with AIR News. See you in the next episode tomorrow. Moving on, UN agencies have called for an immediate end to attacks on healthcare facilities in Ukraine. In a joint statement yesterday, the UN Children's Fund, the World Health Organization and the UN Population Fund said that attacks are killing and causing serious injuries to patients and health workers, destroying vital health infrastructure and forcing thousands to forego accessing health services despite catastrophic needs. Meanwhile the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights said at least 596 civilians have been killed in Ukraine since the start of the military operation and at least 1067 have been injured it said that 43 of those killed were children Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has said he will continue negotiating with Russia and is waiting for a meeting with Vladimir Putin Zelensky during his address yesterday said his delegation has a clear task to do everything to ensure a meeting between the two presidents he said talks are held daily between the two countries by a video conference the president said the talks are necessary to establish a ceasefire and more humanitarian corridors he said those corridors have saved more than 130000 people in 6 days five indian students were killed in a road accident in canada on saturday morning the accident occurred in southern Southern Ontario Ajay Bisaria India High Commissioner to Canada described the incident as a heartbreaking tragedy External Affairs Minister Dr S Jayashankar has expressed grief on the passing away of five Indian students in Canada In a tweet the minister expressed condolences to the families He also prayed for the recovery of those injured 
Dr. Jay Shankar said Indian High Commission in Toronto will provide all necessary support and assistance. Sports Minister Anurag Thakur has congratulated Shatla Lakshay Sen on winning silver at the German Open 2022. In a tweet, Mr. Thakur said, A brilliant performance for India's Lakshay Sen. Well done, champ. The minister said Lakshya Sen became the first Indian to clean silver medal at the Badminton World Federation BWF Super Series 300 German Open 2022. In cricket, Sri Lanka was 60 for one a short while ago on the third day of the second test against India at Bengaluru. The visitors resumed their second innings at the overnight score of 28 for one at Stumps on day two last night. Hosts had 419 run lead in the second innings. Earlier, India declared its second innings at 303 for nine, setting a mammoth 447 run target before Sri Lanka. The Sensex and the Nifty today climbed around 1% in the afternoon trade. Both the domestic key stock indices surged amid mixed skews from the global share markets. The BSE Sensex was trading above 56,218 mark, while the NEC Nifty was trading near 16,800 level. The Sensex rose 668 points or 1.2% to trade at 56,218. The Nifty was also up 162 points or 0.98% to trade at 16,793. In the forex market the rupee was trading almost unchanged at 76 rupees and 59 paise against the US dollar when reports last came in. Health minister Mansukh Mandavia has urged the families of children and people in the age group of 60 and above to get vaccinated. In a tweet Mr Mandavia said if the children are safe then the country is safe. Expressing happiness the minister informed that from the 16th of March covid vaccination for children in the age group of 12 to 13 and 13 to 14 will start. He said everyone age 60 plus will now be able to get precaution doses. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for today. The national capital Delhi will have a mainly clear sky. The temperature will move between 19 to 33 degrees Celsius. Mumbai will have a heat wave. The minimum temperature was 24 degrees Celsius while maximum is expected to be around 39. Chennai is likely to have a partly cloudy sky. The temperature will vary between minimum 23 to maximum 33 degrees Kolkata will have a partly cloudy sky the minimum temperature was 21 degrees celsius and a maximum of around 33 degrees is expected Srinagar will have a mainly clear sky temperature will hover between 7 and 22 degrees celsius Jammu will have a mainly clear sky the minimum temperature was 15 degrees maximum is expected around 28 degrees Tiruvannathapuram will have a partly cloudy sky the temperature will hover between 23 and 33 degrees celsius Bengaluru will have mist minimum temperature was 19 degrees celsius while the maximum will be around 31 degrees Puducherry will have a partly cloudy sky the temperature will move between minimum 22 to a maximum of 33 degrees celsius and now before we end the bulletin the headlines once again Government decides to start COVID-19 vaccination for 12 to 13 years and 13 to 14 years age groups from the 16th of this month. Budget session of Parliament resumes today after break. Rajya Sabha Chairman M Venkaiah Naidu urges members to sustain positive spirit of first part of session in this part as well. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman moves motion in Lok Sabha to allow same day presentation and discussion of budget and supplementary grants of Jammu and Kashmir. Center assures education of students evacuated from war torn Ukraine will be taken care of by government. Government reiterates to explore all possible options to meet the country's energy demand in view of Ukraine crisis and COVID-19 pandemic. In Manipur newly elected members of 12th legislative assembly take oath. Budget session of Assam legislative assembly begins. Met department issues heat wave alert in some parts of Kerala, Konkan region, Gujarat and Mumbai. More than 180 crore 19 lakh covid vaccine doses administered in the country recovery rate improves to 98.72%. Sports Minister Anurag Thakur congratulates Shatla Lakshya Sen on winning silver at German Open 2022 and in cricket third day's play of second test between India and Sri Lanka underway in Bengaluru and with that we end the midday news